My name is Brittany Allen, and today on Savor the Flavors, we are making whipped potatoes. Simple, right? Well, if you're like me, you've messed up your whipped potatoes a time or two. You kind of wing it. You add a little milk, add a little butter. Sometimes they turn out great, and other times not so much. Today I'll share with you a no-fail, flavorful recipe for my sage and garlic-infused whipped potatoes. When you're making whipped potatoes, you want to use these brown russet or baking potatoes for the best results. I also allow a half pound of potatoes per person when making whipped potatoes. This recipe serves four, so I used two pounds of potatoes. Earlier I peeled them and I cut them into chunks. When you're making whipped potatoes and before you boil them, you want to make sure that all your chunks are the same size because the potatoes will cook evenly and that will affect the outcome of the potatoes in the end the texture. We're just going to cover these with some water. I have about three inch chunks here and I like to use a nice deep pot when I'm making whipped potatoes or when I'm boiling them because they have a tendency to want to boil over. So use a pot larger than you think you need. Okay, then we're just going to put those on the stove. We're going to just salt the water a little bit, start seasoning them already. And we're just going to get those boiling. Once they come to a boil, we're going to just reduce the heat to a low boil and let them cook for 12 minutes or until a toothpick, when inserted, goes in with just a little bit of resistance. Now, I did mention that these potatoes were infused. And to infuse them, we're actually going to infuse the milk that we use to whip them. Here I have 2 thirds cup of milk. We'll just put that in our little saucepan here. To that, we're going to add 2 cloves of garlic that I've lightly smashed. Just by smashing them a little, it helps to release the natural oils and infuse the milk. And five to six fresh sage leaves. Now we're just going to heat that. We just want the sage and the garlic to sort of steep in that milk and infuse it. Okay, our potatoes are looking great. It's time to drain them. When you're draining your potatoes, I always turn them away from you so that you don't get burned or splashed by the hot water or steam. Now, what I like to do is then return my potatoes to the stove just for a little bit because we want to dry them or make sure all that water has evaporated and they're nice and dry before we mash them. Now, while that's going on, Shake them a little. While that's going on, I'm going to strain our milk. It smells so amazing. It's so surprising how much flavor gets infused in the potatoes just by infusing the milk. And what's great is you get that flavor, but they still taste like potatoes. Now, let's check our potatoes. Oh yeah, nice and dry, that's all it takes. And we're just gonna put them in our stand mixer. Get them all in there. <laughs> okay, now, when you're whipping potatoes, I find that a stand mixer works best. Or you could use a hand mixer too. Or if you're up to it the old fashioned way, you can do that too. Now, the one thing that doesn't work, I find, is a food processor. For some reason, it just turns them into paste. Don't ask me how I know. Now, we're just gonna add a little bit of our milk here. And we'll raise our bowl. And we're just going to sort of start breaking up the potatoes. Okay, now we're going to add four tablespoons of butter and the rest of our milk. And then we're just going to whip them until they're nice and smooth and creamy. Okay, those are looking fabulous. Now, I'm going to put these in a serving bowl. When I'm having guests over, or if it's a special occasion, I always like to garnish these with some fried sage leaves. And here's how I made them. Those 
potatoes are looking so good, nice and steaming hot. I swear sometimes I'd rather eat a bowl of whipped potatoes than a bowl of ice cream. Now here's a tip when you're making whipped potatoes, Oftentimes you're making a turkey or a roast or something at the same time. Make your whipped potatoes while your protein is in the oven and then just heat them in the microwave right before you want to serve them because it just makes things go so much more smoothly. Now, I always like to top these with just another little pat of butter, get that melting on there, and some of those fried sage leaves for a garnish. The next time you're making whipped potatoes, I'd love for you to savor the flavors of my sage and garlic infused whipped potatoes.